Much attention has been given to Marx's 11th thesis, which reads, The philosophers have only interpreted the world in various ways. The point, however, is to change it. The overemphasis on this thesis has cast a shadow over Marx's other theses, making the ground fertile for much misconception. The obvious question has to be asked. Who exactly should change the world? The philosophers? The masses? The elite? The answer to this question can be found in Marx's third thesis on Feuerbach. So let's read this thesis and do proper justice to it. The materialist doctrine that men are products of circumstances and upbringing and that, therefore, changed men are products of other circumstances and changed upbringing forgets that it is men that change circumstances and the educator himself needs educating. Hence, this doctrine necessarily arrives at dividing society into two parts, of which one is superior to society, in Robert Owen, for example. The coincidence of the changing of circumstances and of human activity can be conceived and rationally understood only as revolutionizing practice. As we can see, according to Marx, there is a constant interaction between people and the material system in which they are. Furthermore, the centrality of human activity in historical change is quite apparent in this thesis. However, according to Marx, given the materialist assumption, reformers like Owen believed that changing the material circumstances of the system would be enough in order to bring about social change for the people. In believing this, they neglected at least three things. That people like Owen themselves were also parts of the very same system. Secondly, that change should be brought about by the masses and not by a single individual such as Owen. Thirdly, that the masses should be ready for change. The common misconception about Marxism is that Marxist philosophy is a revolutionary philosophy that professes that change must be injected into society. To feed their misconception, people might bring to mind Marx's prophecy about the inevitability of change from industrialism to socialism. Thanks to the Russian Revolution of 1917, this misconception was further propagated by the Soviet Union. Russia was far from ready to become a communist state, and Marx would have been shocked to find out that the change he had in mind happened in Russia of all places. According to Marx, those people who make a distinction between themselves and the people cannot bring about a proper and justified change, because the masses must first become intellectually and politically ready for the desired change. That is to say, people like Owen and Lenin need to understand that they have to see themselves as parts of the system, not separate from it. They cannot be said to hold the key to progress. The key to progress must be held by the people, and change should be brought about by them. No single individual or revolutionary group should push the masses towards revolution. If the masses are not ready for change, disaster will follow in case of revolution. Scholars and philosophers can create an awareness for their community, but in doing so they should not divide society into two parts. Remember what happens in the Soviet Union. By dividing society into two parts, the Bolsheviks formed a closed circle of elites that ruled over the rest of society. In effect, the hierarchical structure of Russia's government remained intact, and the leader of the Soviet Union became just another czar, albeit ruling under a different name.